Hey guys, what is up? And welcome to the first episode of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. I'm super excited to be playing this game because Apollo is one of my favorite characters and we also have a couple other characters in this game which I absolutely love. So yeah, I'm just super, super excited. Um, a few other things. Um, first thing, I know you might notice that it says new game and continue when it's supposed to just say new game. I actually recorded this, like, this entire first case yesterday but i since i tried to take like shortcuts and try to like compress how many like four episodes into three or something like that the episodes were really long and i didn't expect that so um yeah i'm just gonna be doing that again <laughs> i'm just gonna be doing it again so i'm so sorry this is not gonna be honestly none of my let's plays are blind let's plays anyway but this is gonna be even less blind since i played it yesterday <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Um, second thing, on Saturday, instead of uploading another episode of Apollo Justice, I'm going to be uploading another... I'm going to be uploading the first episode of Ace Attorney Investigations 1. Because these two games have nothing to do with each other, I thought that it would be a nice idea to try and play two games at the same time. Um, you know, if you guys like that idea, or if you guys like it, how it's going, like, you know, just let me know. Let me know if I should keep doing that. Let me know if I should just keep going on with just Apollo Justice and then play Investigations later. Like, let me know. Let me know. I want to hear you guys on that. And number three, I got a new mic. So, um, I'm not entirely sure how the settings are going to work. Uh, I'm really hoping that it's not too quiet and the music is just right and I'm not peeking too much so yeah um but with all that out of the way let's get going with a new game Showdown time. You lose. Ah! Killed over a card game. I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. <clears throat> Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Me? Please. The cop should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that. Mm. April 20th, 9.37am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Panicked. Oh, I'm sweaty. I can admit it. I'm nervous. Hello? G good morning, sir. You look tense, Justice. Wound up tight. W wound up, sir? No, I'm loose. I'm fine. That screeching noise. Is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. Your first trial and it's a homicide. I guess Justice doesn't start small, eh? I'm fine. I got up at 5 a.m. to do my Courts of Steel voice workout! I'm fine! Ah, uh, that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your speech. <coughs> I overdid it again. <laughs> As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down, if you get my drift. A drift gone, sir! I'm all over that drift! As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Yes, yes, I'm fine, sir! One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. Mm. I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. And today is my first trial. Not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of 
murder. My boss wants to help him out, of course, and so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him. No way! Whoa! Good, uh, morning. Morning. It's all up to you today. First trial, nervous. Meeting him, cardiac arrest. Uh, I think it's supposed to say something. Uh, help? So, you're... Uh, fine! Uh, I'm fine! Uh, Mr. Fine, is it? Uh, I didn't remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney, and he's your friend, so why... You'll see. Uh... You can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean... I mean, I... It's time. Shall we? Y yes sir! Okay, I need to focus. First trial, here comes justice! April, t <laughs> April 20th, 10 a.m. District Court Court number 2. Oops. The court is now in session. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Uh, the defense is, uh, fine, I mean, ready, Your Honor. Line going blank. Don't panic. Uh, too late. Your name was Mr. Justice, and this is your first trial? Y yes Your Honor, uh, but I'm fine, really. Are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. <laughs> um, Mr. Gavin. Yes, Your Honor. I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. However, a defense attorney must always see to his client's wishes, and my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice, but to entrust his case to this greenhorn, why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience, fine, but does he have cords of steel? Then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. Does Mr. Gavin have the best uh, vocal cords in uh, of the century? I think not. This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne? To think I saw you enter this room a fresh attorney, and now I'll see you leave in chains. Ah, Winston Payne, subtle as ever, I see. Ahem. <laughs> the crime occurred at the Borscht Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him, wham, on the head, smack, killed him cold. Hmm, a customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant, you say he was... The pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright, a pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life, a bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Why is it called the deadly bottle? Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record? Right, I've heard of that! Use the court record button to look at evidence so far. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right, the court record button. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. Sounds like it's time to take a look at the court record. Okay, Shady Smith, April 17th, between 1.45 a.m. and 2.15 a.m. Cerebral hemorrhaging resulting from blunt force trauma to the forehead. Okay. Uh, picture, and then... Deadly bottle. Nice. So the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this, um, Shady Smith fellow? We believe he was a traveler, your honor. A traveler? According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He had only returned to this country recently, though his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That too is unclear at the present, your honor. We believe they first met at the Bosch Ball Club on the night of the crime. If they had only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano playing? That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. 
At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second! Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself! Well, she it. Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal. It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim, yet it was only that, a game, in the purest sense, a competition, Your Honor. A competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs wreathed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Uh, come again? The cards on the table had blue backs, Your Honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present, and impress women. That will be our first order of business here, then, to impress all the women in the courtroom. <laughs> Very well, the defendant. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held on the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it. My first trial. Here goes nothing. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room will replay and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. Hmm. A pianist who can't play piano? Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, Your Honor. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Are you alright? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? It's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times. Though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What to do? Should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher course in cross-examination? No, we're good. I've played the last three games. I think you'd better do more than you think. Then think. You know it, or you do not. I'm fine. The cords of steel are ready for battle. My weapons, press and present. Find any inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony, and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it, know it, do it. Inconsistencies? Lies? Phoenix Wright? As if! Phoenix Wright would never lie, and it's up to me to prove it! The defense may begin the cross-examination. Okay. They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional, after all. Ah, do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yes, your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. W what I've played poker for seven years in that little room. And I've never lost once. What? You see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. Wait, you've never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? Yeah, because he was a lawyer. <laughs> the room in the crime scene photo is an attraction? It has quite a history, actually. The Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. B black market? All in the past, things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. A smoky room, gambling hoods, you know. Just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. The bosses gather around the table, cutting deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, Lagoon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. That window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout little, but little else. The room had a few other tricks to it though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. Two decks of cards? 
A simple measure to, protect, to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards upon the floor, each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Incidentally, we just- we used two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. Heh. <laughs> yes, a game of hands. This competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. That's right. It was a simple game after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment that the crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime? Now that's strange. What strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. Ah! Ugh, I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair yet, Justice. S sir Right. There's something I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand, and I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? Very well. The defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press. And I've got myself a whole new testimony. I plead silence regarding the murder, but I never- But I will say I never touched the murder weapon. I saw that your fingerprints- So you say you didn't touch the murder weapon. This grape juice bottle, right? So I said. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? <laughs> What kind of hair flip? What's this? What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see, and it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. Shit. Objection! No need to shout, Mr. Justice, I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears and our case. But, but what about my cords of steel? I worked hard to get these cords. Anyway, what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove- Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted, and there can only be one reason for that. Yes. To brain someone with the bottle. Ah! Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh, I see no problem, Justice. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. Defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Hmm, not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright, but still, that... R really? Uh, yes, well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at the diagram of the murder scene, shall we? The victim was murdered in the small room in a basement two floors down from ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I see. And this is the phone that made the call? The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime if he so chose, yet he fulfilled his duty as a, cis as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative? Uh, I save, Mr. Gavin. I better not waste this. 
I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. T toyed? I assure you, no one is more serious about- What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment the crime occurred? How can you possibly know this? That's a good question! How indeed! The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a decisive witness. <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. So someone else was in the room the night of the crime. That must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up until now has been a warm-up justice. Are you ready? Very well. The prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. Aww. The witness will state her name and profession. Hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? <laughs> the judge became blind. I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic-looking horns. So I used a little hair gel. Relax, people. Have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. Don't cut off my horns. You are sure? I swear it on my gavel. Please come out. Isn't violence against hair a crime, your honor? Well, if you are sure it's okay. I'm scared to do her voice because I don't want to sound offensive by doing a Russian accent. Well, wait a minute. Would the prosecution care to explain the witness's um, paraphernalia? Uh, yes. She is a professional, Your Honor. Those are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be... My name is Olga Orly. I am employed as waitress in Borscht Bowl Club restaurant. Then why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve Borscht at this naming restaurant. But I also perform, uh, how it is said, other service? I take it one of these other services is taking the customer's pictures. Da da! Like, for example, this one. Uh, that's... the defendant? Indeed. On the, night to, on the night of the murder. Man in white hat is one who has gone kaput. Indeed. That is the victim. Order, order! This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. It is the same way as I drop cold balls of borscht on laps of customers, casually. Hmm, then the court will casually accept this new evidence. Now, witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in room, the hideout we call it. Excuse me? The hideout? It is room where famous gangster bad guy was arrested. <laughs> bad guy? It is room where murder took place. What? Your look of other surprise, it is lovely. I will post my courtroom door later for you. Da da, photos will be numbered and you will write with wh which ones you want copy of. So there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and... Olga Orly, our witness. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Very well, witness. You will testify to the court about that night's events. I really hope my Russian accent is good enough. That night, customer asked me to deal cards for game. It was cold. Both players played with hats on. Da. The victim, he plays with whole time. He plays whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. Then last hand is done, but something terrible has happened. Da. That man flew at the victim and is strangling him to death. Hmm. Incidentally, who won the game? Isn't it obvious? The winner was the victim, Mr. Smith. That's ridiculous. Um, because... Because Mr. Wright can't lose. Ahem. Justice? Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection? But he had a loss in seven years. Take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose a case my first seven years as a prosecutor, either. Incidentally, I have some evidence here. These are the poker chips as they lay at the very moment of the crime. The hand and chips on this side belong to the defendant, Mr. Wright. Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? Da, I mean, yes! Imagine that poker is war. Your hand is your army, and the chips are the spoils. Oh, I know that! After all, in my youth, I was known as the poker head of courtroom number three. I think he means poker face. 
Hmm, looking at this picture, it does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. Very well. The defense may be cross-examine the witness. Okay. Okay. I think I kind of already know what it is. This one. Oh, really? Strangled, you say? That's odd. The normal customers only choke on borscht. No, I mean, this report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head. Ah! Miss Orly, really now? Did you witness the crime? Mmm. Ah! Looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. He's still wearing his hat and everything. Yet it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that's quite shocking, isn't it? This head certainly was hit. But I have seen it happen. The defendant, he lunged at the victim, his neck. Oh, really, Miss Orly? I think I've caught you in your own lie this time. Justice. I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think this through once more. What do you mean? I found a contradiction. There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue the cross-examination. There's such a thing as thinking too much. This horse is dead. Let's stop beating it. There's such a thing as thinking out loud too much, too. I wasn't thinking out loud, though! Okay. The second one is this. Because I know she said locket. He's not wearing a locket in this picture, so... You know, there was one curious part in her testimony, just like Mr. Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what it is you're thinking so intensely about? Recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on locket at his neck, I believe she said. I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. No, but look at this photograph. Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. I knew you'd be able to handle this. But, but what does it mean? If we are to believe this witness's testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, someone must have taken it off, no? Taken it off? Wait, you don't mean- The defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Oh! Uh. D defendant, what do you have to say to this? Say? Yes? I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? Oh? You mean this? Yes, it's a locket with a photograph inside. A photo of my daughter. C come again? Mr. Wright, you have a daughter? We confirmed it at the time of the arrest. The picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. So Mr. Wright has a locket too? Why don't I buy that this is just a coincidence? Well now, if the results of the poker game led to the murder, perhaps we should hear a bit more about the outcome of the game? Further testimony won't really be necessary. It's clear the defendant lost. Badly. Uh, Miss Orley, you will testify to the court about the game played between the victim and the defendant. The... the... The game began with 3,500 points in chips for each man. House chips come in two sizes, small and large. The one who was winning, the... it was victim. For last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. The moment loss was decided, defendant grabs bottle from table and... Indeed. Looking at this picture, it does seem to be a one-sided game. As the court knows, poker was the defendant's life. Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Oh, how many times have I heard these words? I done it in a fit of anger, Your Honor, and now I regret what I done. A common tale, but true. Me thinks the judge watches too many old court movies. Mr. Wright said he hasn't lost in seven years, so this testimony must be wrong. Why are we just believing Mr. Wright? It's like, it could happen. If you don't... 
like, okay, listen, even if you have like one for seven years in a row, that doesn't mean like accidents could happen and then you could just lose one day. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um, I think this is actually where we're going to stop for today. Roll the end card. Objection! You haven't hit like and subscribe yet. Hold it! You forgot to ring the bell to get notified whenever I upload. Take that! Click here to watch more of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!